something in my life isn't working. Hi everyone, Roxanne here from financerocks.com. Today I am going to answer the question, when is it okay to access my emergency funds? If you are new to the channel, here's a little background. I was broken unemployed at one point, had less than $200, and that was total. That's like checking, savings, cash, everything. And since that time, I went on to build a $10,000 emergency fund and continue building that. Now my husband and I have about a $24,000 fully funded emergency fund. So today I'm going to share a few tips that I learned along that journey that will hopefully help you to protect your emergency funds and to help work through those times when you're considering accessing your emergency fund. Having an emergency fund is just one part of my overall financial plan, both for how to manage money as well as just overall life happiness. While I'm glad that people spend time thinking about and planning for their emergency fund, sometimes it's helpful to take a step back and kind of look at the big picture. If you're spending all of your financial resources filling and then rating, filling and then rating your emergency funds, you're not going to be able to make progress on the other things that really matter for our finances. Things like paying off debt, saving for retirement, wealth building, leaving a legacy, financial independence, whatever your bigger financial goals are. So throughout this video, I will be focusing on getting out of that cycle of filling and rating your savings. So I'm going to share the prompts that I would go through if I were on the brink of needing to access my emergency funds. And then I'm going to go through each of the five funds that I keep and share the criteria for when I would access them and when I wouldn't. Okay, the ultimate goal. The ultimate goal for my emergency fund is to actually be able to pay for emergencies out of our regular income. Each month right now we have our income is higher than our expenses. So every month that excess amount is saved or invested. What I would really like to do is to not even touch my emergency funds and just use this excess income to pay for any emergencies instead of having to go to savings. Now there are gonna be things that come up that exceed that, but really that's my ultimate goal for how to pay for emergencies is just being able to cash flow them just right out of our regular income. My intention for our emergency funds is that it's money that I would very rarely or never access. Running out of money should be a trigger, a trigger that prompts us to go through questions, evaluate our life. Is the life that I'm building sustainable? Now, sometimes things come up that are outside of our control and that happen through no fault of our own. Some of you have very difficult and challenging situations. But I just wanted to stress that part of going through that hardship is just learning to focus on the things that you can control and just deciding to do whatever you need to do to fix that situation or to, you know, prevent it from happening in the future. So let's go ahead and get into the prompts. The first set are the prompts that I actually thought through, actually went through when I went broke. Is the life I'm living not sustainable? Something in my life isn't working. What is it and how can I change it? What fears and anxieties do I need to overcome to prevent this from happening in the future? What fears and anxieties do I need to overcome to get out of the current situation that I'm in? Do I need to get better at saving money, making money, or both? <laughs> Where am I on the scale of having 0% control of my life and having 100% control of my life? What can I do to increase that percentage of control? So what can I do to have more control over the things that affect my finances? What are my three biggest expenses and what can I do to minimize the costs in each of those areas? Do I need to move to a more affordable town? Do I need to move to a more affordable apartment? Do I need to sell my car and buy a more affordable car? What else can I do to make sure that this situation never happens again? And then probably the most important question, what else can I do to come up with money besides accessing my emergency funds or besides accessing the money that I have left? This is the most important question because this crosses into that area of boundaries and not touching that money and promising myself that I would come up with another way rather than touching that money. You know, it can be kind of the easy option to just go ahead and take that money from savings instead of spending some time thinking about what else you could do instead of accessing that. You know, sometimes I have to force myself to 
like just wait a second, think about some other options, try to come up with something else because if your gut reaction or if your initial thought is, okay, I'm gonna ask for money or okay, I'm gonna raid my savings, that's okay. It's, you know, everyone has gut reactions. It's just forcing myself to spend a little bit more time thinking about it before I do those things. Maybe that's what I decide to do, but ultimately just spending the time to think about it is what really helps prevent me from using money that I have previously set aside for something else. So those were the prompts that I personally went through. I also wanted to share a few prompts that didn't necessarily apply to me that I think could be helpful. Am I accessing my emergency funds too frequently? Was I on the right track and just didn't have enough time to save up enough additional money to not have to access my emergency funds? Could this financial crisis have been minimized or avoided if, if I had insurance or if I had better insurance? And I have a few income related ones how can I make my boss's life easier so that I can start setting myself up for raises and promotions? What additional tasks can I volunteer for at work? Is the career I chose just not going to pay the wage I want and need to make? Do I need to get a different job? It didn't apply. I didn't have a job at the time, so do I need to get a different job? What can I do to become more valuable in the marketplace so that I can command a higher salary or better position? Going through these prompts, caused me to come up with a few big takeaways. The first one was being frugal isn't enough. I actually have to make money too. I realized that I had to overcome my anxiety about applying for jobs in a place where I didn't know anybody. Or you know that common expression, it's not what you know, it's who you know. I thought that to myself a lot. I had to overcome that mindset and force myself to apply for jobs even though it felt like a waste of time. It felt I felt hopeless about the situation. And then my last big takeaway was I need to have boundaries around my emergency funds that slow me down and trigger these questions, trigger these prompts so that I can work through what else can I do instead of writing these. So the boundaries are, you know, to protect the emergency funds that I have. If you're in this similar situation and you are just about out of money or entirely out of money, I just wanted to mention that it's good to take a minute to acknowledge your emotions. I hate this concept that some emotions are bad, like sadness and anger, and, and some emotions are good, like happiness. All of our emotions serve a biological purpose. If I hadn't felt so much fear and anxiety, I wouldn't have tried so hard to get out of that situation. Fear helps us to know that we are in a situation that we need to change. Sadness helps us know that we need to reach out for emotional support. It keeps communities together. It keeps you engaged with your friends and family and loved ones. Give yourself some time to acknowledge those emotions, to feel them, don't repress them, that's not healthy. And don't engage yourself in negative self-talk. That's not what I'm talking about here. I'm just talking about an honest, evaluation of your situation and just self-awareness about the situation. Now acknowledge those emotions and then move on to the next step, which is the action plan. Also brace yourself because in my experience, things always get worse before they can get better. You might already be working tons of hours and be tired all the time. You might have to work more hours. You might already feel like you have cut everything and there's nothing else to cut and it's hopeless. I believe that there is always more that you can cut. It's a journey of becoming efficient with your finances. There's always new products coming out that you can try that might eliminate the need for something else. There's always cheaper alternatives coming out. I've worked with a lot of people and reviewed a lot of people's finances and I have never met anybody that had nothing that they could cut. Try if you can to just embrace this idea that things are gonna get worse before they get better. I specifically remember telling myself, my life already sucks, so what if it sucks a little worse? Okay, last thing I promise before I get into each of the emergency funds and the criteria I use for when to access each. And that last thing is to just get clarity on your current financial situation. So many people neglect their finances People don't look at their monthly total spending. They don't compare that to the last quarter, the last year. 
But knowledge is power, especially for your finances. You need to know where you are so that way you know how extreme you need to go to get to where you want to go. You know, maybe you look at your finances and you'd really do a thorough review and you decide, oh, hey, it's not as bad as I thought it was. So I don't need to go as extreme as moving to a new house or selling my car. Or you might review your finances and say, holy shit, it's worse than I thought. I need to go way harder than I was even expecting before. So knowing where you are is going to help you to make those decisions to decide how extreme you need to go. I went very extreme because I was very stressed out about it. My current situation when I finally looked at my bank balance was very bad. So taking a quick evaluation of where you currently are, how much you're currently spending, what your current net worth is would be a good one to look at your total assets and total debt before you decide, you know, what if you're going to access your emergency funds is going to be helpful. And, you know, maybe you start going through your current situation and realize that you have these other, this other asset that you had forgotten about that you can use, or maybe you realize that you can cut a few things and then you know, when your next check comes in, you'll have a surplus of money that you can use instead of accessing your emergency fund. So maybe you only need to, you know, delay spending a few more days before a check comes in. Knowing your current financial situation, I feel like is the most important thing that you can do, reviewing your spending. So if you have been neglecting your finances, just take a little while, and it doesn't have to take a super long time. It can take a little bit of time, and then you can move on to the next steps of evaluating your emergency funds. Okay, it's finally time to go over each of the funds and when it's okay to access each one. I did wanna say that this is my customized list of the five types of funds that I keep. I have repeatedly recommended that people customize this to their own emergency scenarios that they're most likely to face. So make sure that you're thinking about your own financial situation. If you'd like more information on this, I do have an emergency fund playlist that I will link to below and I'll try to get a card up. I've been trying to learn how to do that. So I was actually showering this morning and realized that having the five types of emergency funds with the specific whys behind each one, actually that really helps us to decide when we're going, when we can access that fund and when we cannot. So for example, the first fund that we have is a paper cash fund. So that's just a little bit of paper money that we keep in our safe in case there's like a natural disaster and we're not able to use our credit or debit cards. So that answers the question, right? When do we access this? If there is a natural disaster where we can't access our electronic funds or if there's like, if we experience identity theft and we're not able to access our funds. The second fund that I keep is a minimum balance fund. So this is just a little bit of money in the bottom of our checking account that is there to prevent us from bouncing checks or racking up overdraft fees. So the scenarios that we would be allowed to access that money or use it would be just that scenario. If we're out of money in our account and we need to pay our utility bill. So there's just that little bit of buffer. The third fund is a common shortage fund. The purpose of this fund is to help us cover big unexpected bills for car repairs, medical expenses, or any other unexpected bills that come up. And if we have money in our regular checking account, we would use that money before using this common shortage fund. So these are stackable. Each of them is going to be we would only access it if this happened and all other money has been depleted. So the fourth one, for example, is the job loss fund. So we would only access the job loss fund if our income dried up and we had depleted all of the other cash, all of the other checking accounts. So this is one of those funds that serves multiple purposes. It is for medical and job loss. Hey, more on the criteria on that one. It is for job loss or serious medical conditions for a certain set of people. So it's my husband and I, our immediate family members or closest friends. I'm talking like top three. So I do have those boundaries set around that, that it is for serious things for certain people. And that tells me, you know, if I have a great second cousin removed on the fourth side, you know, and they have a broken leg, they wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to access this money 
to go and visit them. That would, I would either need to come up with another way to go and see them or not go and see them. Those are my specific criteria. It's for close friends and family, serious medical issues, or job loss causing us to not have the money. Okay, death fund. This Every time I say it, I'm like, oh man, this is a serious one. I kind of wish I had a different name for it, but I just always have thought of it as like debt money. So this fund, the purpose behind it is for life or death situations for myself, my partner, and then immediate family members, so parents or siblings only. Once again, I would only access this if all of our other assets were depleted, and I do mean all of our, including our house. All of our other assets have been depleted, then I could use this money for life and death situations. This money is dead to me, is how I like to think of it. So it's money that I pretend it doesn't exist. Money that I don't include when I'm looking at my bank balances, like I auto, I, I've trained myself to automatically subtract that amount from my accounts so that I know that it, that money just doesn't exist. And ultimately, if I never spend it, which I tr am trying not to, it's money that would go to paying for my funeral costs and end of life care so that my family doesn't have to be so burdened. So I did come up with just a little example. So let's say you have zero dollars in checking and savings, your assets are all depleted. You have your thousand dollars of death fund money. And then let's say your car breaks down and you need $500 to fix it. My response would be, you need to come up with additional income, you need to sell things, you need to come up with some other plan for paying for that car other than your death fund. This is the fund that I have the most serious boundaries around with myself that are meant to protect that fund and meant to protect that money. I would expect myself to get creative and come up with another solution to fixing the car other than this money. And I've mentioned on here before a little bit, but just having this set of money that I expect myself to be very disciplined with helps me grow my discipline to protect the other funds as well. I hadn't realized that that would be one of the benefits of having this death fund was increased discipline for all of my finances. But just having this money that I plan to never touch has been so helpful to me in saving and keeping money. So those are the five types of funds that I keep and my criteria for accessing each one. The last thing that I wanted to leave you with is just that this really boils down to it being a mental battle. It boils down to protecting my emergency funds from myself because ultimately I'm the biggest threat to those funds. If I don't respect those boundaries that I've set with those emergency funds, if I can't respect and protect that money, I won't have it. And it really is a mental battle with myself. The hardest thing about keeping money is continually keeping it. Every day you have to protect that money that you set aside before. And that's what's hardest about saving money, isn't it? Because you just have to constantly be not touching that money to continue to have it. So as far as having the mindset to not access your emergency fund, it boils down to pretending that I don't have it. So like I said, with the death fund, just imagining that it's not there, imagining that it's not real money, building a life where I don't have to raid that money. Like I said, working on your situation and trying to get your income up and your expenses down so that you can just pay for emergencies out of your regular income instead of touching these. And then the last is just having those boundaries where if a situation comes up, you don't touch that money or you know, you access it only in under those certain circumstances that you've set. That's all I have for you today. That was kind of a lot. I've been recording for 41 minutes. We'll see how long it turns out to be by the end. But I end all of my personal finance coaching calls with this question, what was the most helpful takeaway? So I wanted to start asking that here in the YouTube videos. So if you would like to comment below, I'd be interested to hear what you thought the most helpful takeaway was from this video. I post new videos every Friday, so if you'd like to be notified, please hit the subscribe button below and then the bell to be notified. Thank you for watching, and until next time, I hope your finances rock.